welcome back. This is the second part of my favorite of the year series. We're going to talk about non-fiction, contemporary, classic favorite. If you want to see a fantasy, science fiction, mystery favorite, I will link the other video right here. And let's get into it. So to start things up, I love starting my month with a non-fiction book. I think like it's a palette cleanser to me. And so I have two favorite this year, a biography one and a non-biography one. The biography one is The Girl with Seven Name by Ion Seo Lee. This is the story of Ion Seo Lee who defected North Korea, but it is quite different to other defector story. I feel like she did not leave North Korea in search of freedom with the warning of never going back. She, she grew up in a pretty middle class. She did not see that she was indoctrinated or anything. Before turning 18, she just wanted to see China for a bit and then come back to her family, but she couldn't. And so that's the whole story um, the book is set in three different parts i think the whole first part about her growing up in north korea then her uh, getting out and like her her life in china and then the third third part her most recent life i would say i don't want to get into spoilers because her life is crazy <laughs> when i read this i was like oh my god like if this was a uh, fiction i would say like there's too many plots <laughs> going on like how can one person go through all this it is very inspirational but it is very hard-hitting too what i love with that book is that it made me think how do i know that i was not indoctrinated by my own country how do i know the history that i was taught in school is what went on at some point in time and I love having that reflection and seeing, oh yes, I, can, I have different source. I can see it for my eyes. I have people from different country and we were taught the same thing. Or sometimes you taught stuff from different angle and that's very interesting to compare which twigs are changed from one country to the other. Um, but I pretty much know I haven't been indoctrinated but it was very interesting to have that reflection. I think two reasons you should read this book is one, to learn more about North Korea and the dictatorial regime that is going on there and how it impacts the lives of many, many people. And two, to read about the very inspiring life of a young, strong woman that is navigating through life. And through all that, she still keeps the strength to believe in herself and to love her, her family and to have compassion for others. Second nonfiction is From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Dougherty. She is a mortician and is, in this book, she talks about different way, different culture handle death and the, de and the grieving process and how they handle the dead body. It is so interesting and it stuck with me whole year. I've listened to this on audiobook in February and I have thought about this book so many times and my whole relationship to death changed through that book. Uh, it was so interesting to see how in our culture, we don't talk about it. It is such a hush-hush subject and it should never be talked about un until it happens to you. And then it's a huge, huge slaps in the face. And it's very hard to overcome once you are grieving a, a close one. And I think this book really allow you to have an overlook on life. And life is death. death is life. There is no life without death. And it's part of the whole process. And we should, from the beginning, know that this is where it's going. <laughs> and I think especially this year, it is important to, to know that there are different outlook to life and death. And you could, you could change yours if you want. That's what I did. And I feel better. I, I feel closer to life actually in nature. I don't want to go into a spiritual side rent, but if those subjects sounds interesting to you or if you feel very icky about it, I would say it's a good time to read that book. You will thank me later, I hope. <laughs> Next, poems. That's something I wanted to get into for a long time and I didn't until November's Goodreads list of like the best whatever and there's a poem category and decided to read like five or six of those and this is my favorite by far so far that I've ordered it and now I have my hard copy of it and I can read and reread those poems all the time. 
First, this book is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I haven't seen something like this in like a book before. Every single page is different. Every single page has different graphics. And the way the author writes her poem, I think that's what makes the difference in this. She gets story from different people on Instagram and then she writes them poem to help them get through whatever they are struggling with right now. And in so many of those, I felt like she was speaking to me, like to my story, to whatever was going on in my life. So much so I've read and translated some passages. My mom was like, how come? Like, how does she know that? Like, it is, it, it, it is amazing. And I would recommend to you, like, there is an ebook version, there is an audiobook version, but please don't. It is, it is so, so much better. I've, my first time through, I've read it through the ebook. The physical copy is just like a thousand times better. Please pick up the hard copy if you, if you want to try that book. Okay, next category is classics. And um, I love reading classics, but I don't feel like I have a favorite. I love reading them and see where the hype come from, <laughs> but I'm not sure I would reread any of them soon. I'm glad I've read them, but I don't count them as favorite. I'm just gonna give you like some that I really like reading. Um, the Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I really like that this was happening in London and France as the revolution, the French Revolution was going on. I've learned so much about French history reading that. Um, the Great Gatsby, I love the 1920s and I just really enjoyed that book. And La Gloire de Mon Père by Marcel Pagnol, My Father's Glory, I believe the title is in English. This is set up in my hometown and I've grown up watching the movies of that and just the first sentence of that book sent me to like summer in Marseille when I was a child like ah, great another quick one uh, graphic novels Heartstopper by Alice Osman I love Alice Osman I love her writing style I love the world she created for all of her persona uh, she was a strong contender for my favorite in contemporary too with um, I was born for this. YA graphic novel talking about two boys falling in love. There is so much representation for LGBTQIA plus uh, character in those books. I, I just love it. It just warms my heart every time I, I read those books. And last category, but not least, contemporary. I could not decide between two contemporary books, but first I want to talk to you about a French one that I really enjoyed. And if you read French, Please try and read this one. It's a gorgeous story. It's uh, Tout le bleu du ciel by Melissa Costa. Da Costa. Basically, a guy who is 26, 27 discovered that he has a um, young version of Alzheimer. This does not exist, but it is in the case of that book. And he just decided to leave everything behind and go on a trip in a van in the south of France as he goes downhill. I won't say more. It's amazing. You will cry. Okay, first is Slay by Britton Morris. In my opinion, it's very important read, especially this year. It is eye-opening to the experience of so many black people, not just in America, but everywhere in the world. And if you're a black person, I think it's a great comfort read because the story is so openly celebratory of blackness. So we follow a student uh, in high school, Kira. Uh, and she is the developer of a game, an online game that is celebratory of blackness and it is such the funnest game ever. <laughs> Basically, she created that because she was just tired of all the racism on all the different ga online games. And the whole plot starts when someone got killed because of this game and the media take this story and makes it something it's not. Kira is such a strong character in that book. She's very well written, but it, she's also a very, very strong persona. And there is so many different twigs and things that makes her her. And I love that about it. Uh, there is also a sister relationship that was very well done, very on point. Uh, I have a sister myself and I could see so many of the stuff we used to do. Um, also, you there is different point of view. 
a different part of the books where you follow all the people that help develop the game or that are playing the game in different part of the world, different black people in different part of the world. And I love that about that book too. So basically I would recommend this book to everyone. And the other one that I really enjoyed was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This was beautiful, heartbreaking, soul shattering. <laughs> This book was inspired by the, the Black Lives Matter movement, of course. Uh, it was given so many prizes, I think it was written in 2015 or 18, and so many people have talked about it, and it is due. Like, the hype, you guys, is real. <laughs> this book is amazing, the character work is wonderful, but the most important part, of course, is the subject matters that is talked about in this book, and I think it was done in the greatest way ever <laughs> and this book felt so honest and for someone who does not live in america this book gave me a fresh new understanding of the whole situation and as a white person enjoying the privilege of living in a country that is ruled by systemic racism being able to see the day by day racism a young black girl has to go through was eye-opening to me i'm very grateful to that book for that reason i would recommend it to everyone out there. Plus, there's so many more reasons this book is amazing and you will get the surprise as you read it. Okay, you guys, we are finished with my favorite of 2020. Let me know yours. Let me know what you think about my favorite and we'll talk soon. Bye.